Just settles and just. All-American Luca Garza having another All-American Luca Garza start to this season. Now, Luca Garza continues to be the talk of college basketball. He's in a zone only the legends have entered. His second half performance against rival Iowa State last game was mind-blowing, and Northern Illinois has no one who can match up with the Iowa All-American. Yeah, if you're the Huskies, pick your poison. Stuff it inside on Garza, and then these snipers will destroy it from outside the arc. It's not like Luca won't pass it out, and when he does pass it out, Wieskamp, Frederick, and Bo Hannon will make you pay if you double down on the big fella. Huskies come into this afternoon non-conference affair. 0-4 and depleted, COVID issues, injury problems. They're up against it as Garza and the Hawkeyes try to remain perfect. And the Hawks win the tip. Right to left in the home whites with the black and gold trim. C.J. Frederick kick it. Three on the way to start it. Won't go for McCaffrey. Outstanding drive by Frederick, collapses the defense, kicks it out to McCaffrey. That's a shot he has to knock down. He's wide open. Ball swing here with the Huskies. Up top is Anthony Crump, leading rebounder. On the wing to Hankerson. Three-point threat. Wanda Launch goes inside on the block. And the turn. And McCoy. Tally's first for Northern Iowa. Well, they drew the switch, and they found the mouse in the house. Jordan Bohannon stuck on the block, and McCoy took advantage of it. Three ball, and it goes for Jordan Bohannon. Like I mean, we said, pick your poison. Uh, this kid can knock him in from Cedar Rapids all day long. I mean, when he spots up, that shot looks true. Every time he releases it, you expect it to go in. 24 against North Carolina the other night here in Iowa City on seven threes for Bohannon. Early lead for the Hawks. Darius Bean, one of the leading scorers, rattles it down inside the arc. Again, the Huskies doing a phenomenal job putting Luca Garza in ball screens and making him switch. They found two opportunities where they could take advantage of their size at the offensive end. We'll keep our eye on that. Frederick shook his defender and then Hoop wouldn't have it on the other end. Ankerson, the handoff. Bean with it. Dribble drive past Garza. The scoop off the window won't go. Back the other way, Bohannon. Garza for three. Not this time. And if you're Northern Illinois and you want to pull the upset, Bob, you can't turn the ball over. You have to rebound with Iowa in all three of their possessions. They put Luca Garza in a ball screen, forced a switch, and have had some positive outcomes. Let's just see if they do it every time down until Iowa can deal with it. Here it is again. Ankerson around it, into traffic, got Garza on the trampoline and then scores with the pretty scoop. Fantastic game plan by Coach Montgomery, an excellent execution by the backcourt. 6-3 Huskies, not anymore. Tying triple there by Wieskamp. I mean, he is such a fantastic player at both ends of the court. Young players, yes, he can shoot the basketball, but watch him at the defensive end. He guards as well. Huskies little Harlem Globetrotters outside until they can find an opening to work it inside. Burning that shot clock down. And last touched by Northern Illinois. There's Fran McCaffrey. You see the totals here at Iowa. One more tally on the W side, and he gets number 200. He's had a phenomenal career here. He doesn't apologize for playing fast. They lead the league in scoring every year. Sprinkles in a little three-quarter court press and recruited the best player in the country, Luca Garza. There's one of his sons with a three ball. They get a reset. But a kick there keeps it with Iowa. And that's one of those resets where Connor has to put the three back up again. Mark Montgomery. Former Michigan State Spartan, comes from the Tom Izzo coaching tree. A decade now, running the Huskies. Wieskamp, 
Drive, jump stop, strong to the hoop. Battle for the loose change. Garza tipped it to McCaffrey. Another reset. And then Wieskamp for three, hits the side of the iron. A good possession by Iowa. I like the aggressive attack by Wieskamp. Just missed a bucket that he should put in, but Garza tips it around. Wieskamp gets another clean look. The shot's just not falling early for Iowa on those rebounds. For the Huskies, if you will, in the early going, they lead it eight to six against the number three team in the land. Jess, that's high praise. Hey, a rare air for this Iowa basketball program, but Coach McCaffrey and his staff and all the players have embraced it, as have the fans. I mean, these kids came back for this reason to win a national title, to win a Big Ten championship. They played extremely well. Coach McCaffrey has put a tough schedule together, and everything is working out well early in the season for the Iowa basketball team. We were reminiscing a bit last time the Iowa team was ranked that high, 86-87, as Garza goes to work. Strong, strong like bull in the paint. Yeah, look, the big fundamental, that is such a difficult shot. He goes up with the baby hook shot with the left hand. I mean, this kid just lives in the gym. Every single game, he shows us a new move. Ties it at eight. On the wing, Crump. His Huskies are long and lean. Not the beef to contend with a Garza. But they have athleticism on cue. But Garza wipes it away. Well, Garza posts up so hard down low. He wins the battle before he catches the ball. Nice drop step. There's no way you can block that baby hook. And again, the left hand. That's just an incredible move by everybody's All-American, Luca Garza, the best player in all the land. Six on the shot clock. Huskies swing it to the corner. Crump has to shoot, does. Iron cleared by Wieskamp. It's really not been Crump's game. He's a slasher. He needs to attack off the bounce, try to pick up some fouls against Luca Garza early in this game. Three ball Bohannon, in and out. That's another quality possession by Iowa. You notice that the ball rarely touches the ground. These guys beat you in so many different ways, but on that possession, there wasn't even a dribble. It's just pass, pass, first guy who's open, let her fly. That ball will go down. Jordan will hand the wide open is about an 80% opportunity. Blow by. And the finish by Thornton again. I just love this kid's game. He leapt off the TV screen when I was breaking down tape. And again, this is... This is probably the Achilles heel of the Iowa defense, the man-to-man D when they get put in ball screens. Luca can't do everything, but if the offensive end, he gets it back. Put back in one for Garza. Foul on Kingsley Okanu. The Hawks. The reload here. Who else underneath? Yeah, it takes three guys up, draws the foul. He's relentless on the offensive glass. And I tell you what, Bob, I, everybody around the state the last couple of days is coming up and asking me have I ever seen a player be in a zone like Luca was against Iowa State. And I have not seen a center enter that type of zone before. He, he couldn't miss. 21 straight points against Iowa State. It was what I call his Heisman moment. You know, you have to have that moment where everybody around the country tunes in and they see what he did. Uh, it reminded me a little bit of Larry Bird back at Indiana State. If you haven't watched that tape, go back and watch it. It was basketball perfected by Luca Garza. Some would say Jordan-esque. Yeah. That one dribbles off and Garza gets an easy board. Yeah, that was the shrug of the shoulders, right? That's why you said Jack yeah. Nask when he was shrugging the shoulders. Like, hey, I can't be stopped. <laughs> exactly. Triple. Bullseye. Now, just think about if you're McCoy from Northern Illinois and your coach says, you got to guard Luca Garza. He's the top player in the country. He leads the nation in field goal percentage. Oh, by the way, you have to get out and stop him from the three-point line as well. I mean, it's an impossible task to ask a young man to, do, to try to cover Luca Garza. Patrick McCaffrey. 22 in the game for Dad in Iowa. Saved by Hankerson. Huskies get a reset. And Mark Montgomery barking out a new play. Dean and Thornton. Thornton. Nice bounce speed. A little too much there on McCoy. Trying to go up and over Garza for a deuce.
Jack Nunji in there as well. Feeds it to Garza. Triple team and a foul call. So, so Luka Garza just went crazy against Iowa State. 34 points, including 21 in a row. He hit four threes in a row in two minutes, and the ball never touched the rim. He was out of his mind. He couldn't even believe it himself. It was a spectacular performance, and the entire country tuned in to just see what hard work and passion and dedication can amount to if you put it all together on a certain night. Yeah, 25 of those came in the second half after Garza had a little press conference with himself. Frederick with the bucket there in the paint. Box plus six. And so Iowa struggled with this ball screen defense, so they slapped the zone on to take away this continuation offense. And now, if you're Northern, you have to work the high post and kick it out for open threes. Thornton gets some clearance. Too much cleared by Nunji and back the other way, Toussaint and a foul. Joe Toussaint, Jess, you call this kid your X Factor. We'll talk about that coming back. But Luka Garza, big time player, but just lately it's been the Luka Garza show. Why not? He's been doing it all year. Fox. Oh, Luka Garza is taking a very difficult game and making it look easy. Nice left hand self touch around the rim. This is what makes guarding him so unfair. He has tremendous range out to 30 feet. And it doesn't matter if there are three defenders trying to put a body on him. He's stronger than everybody else. He works harder than everybody else. And he's more skilled than anyone else in the game. And that's rare to say about a center. And that's why Luka Garza will win the Wooden Award for the University of Iowa. He has been unstoppable this entire year and including early in this game we asked Mark Montgomery have you seen anything like this in your playing days in your coaching days at Michigan State Steve Scheffler of Purdue came to mind back in the late 80s into the early 90s but yeah. then outside of the Big Ten Tyler Hansborough any anybody who's a rim-to-rim -rim guy that's who Luca Garza stacks up against I think those are fair comparisons except for the fact that those guys couldn't shoot like Garza Garza can stretch the floor and these big centers have no idea how to cover him. It's easy for the coach to say you've got Garza, but if he's going to take you out to 30 foot, that's just not fair. Maybe Christian Leitner at times played like Luka, Luka Garza in college. Danny Manning led Kansas to a national title. He had some of those moments, but I tell you watching the Iowa State game the other day, just it seemed like you were watching Larry Bird at Indiana State, and that's, that's stunning. I mean, I don't throw that around lightly. That's an amazing performance by Luka Garza. You saw a little backcourt pressure there out of the timeout by the Hawkeyes. The Huskies doing a phenomenal job of controlling the pace of this game. Look at this, slowing it down, running their offense, try to keep it close, try to break down this Iowa zone and get easy shots. Crump and Thornton playing catch. Free ball, Hankerson. Hits the heel, cleared by Nunji. Toussaint, stop, go, kick. Nunji for three. Garza, and one. This is a recording. Yeah, it's Groundhog Day all over again. I mean, he gets a hand on this ball, goes up. It looks like this is going to be a pretty good block right here. Gets a hand. Oh, Luca just blows right through it. That's what you call a weight room put back, or in Iowa here, we call that Luca Garza being farm strong, Bob. Armstrong sounds redundant. There you go. Missed the free throw, but another opportunity for the Hawkeyes, plus 10. Nunji, interior feed, and Garza just tried to add limit up. We'll get two shots. Hankerson fighting and clawing. Ask Montgomery about that as you look at last Friday against Iowa State. And again, just he was frustrated, got in foul trouble, went to the bench, talked to himself. He, he didn't like the way things were playing out, so he did that vis visualization thing where he says, that's not how I scripted the first half. 
It feels like he let his teammates down in the first half. He was very complimentary to them. He goes to the bench. Iowa still keeps that lead. Iowa State made a good fight there in the first half. But then he came back in, and he just uh, he took it personally. And, and 10 for 10 is not bad from the floor. It's a pretty good night. Acceptable for Garza. Here's that three-quarter court press. They want to get this ball going east and west, get it out of the point guard's hands, and just force careless turnovers. Caffrey almost got the T.O. there. Overlay on the hook by McCoy. Now the other thing that press does is it shortens the shot clock. I was trying to speed this game up a little bit. And Toussaint got a little too handsy there. And that's Crump's game. Crump can put the ball on the floor. He can beat a lot of guys off the dribble. He has to continue to get the ball and his feet into the paint, and good things will happen. That's the first foul whistled on the Hawkeyes here. We're almost halfway through the first half. Again, hands in the passing lane. McCaffrey, the finish. And timeout, Northern Illinois. Got to figure out the defense, got to figure out the offense on the other end, which means figure out how to try to box out Luca Garza. Oh, this is like a little action from Kinnick Stadium. Joe Toussaint, I didn't know he played football in college. Patrick Mahaffrey, two hands, catches a touchdown, Iowa. Maybe got away with a little travel there, but it doesn't matter. That's just a remarkable pass and catch by the two youngsters, the future of the program, and Joe Toussaint, we talked about earlier, Bob, my X factor for the Hawkeyes this year if they want to go to the Final Four. Yeah, but you didn't say he was going to watch old YouTube videos of Chuck Long, did you? <laughs> Playing a little Rose Bowl action there, right? I'll tell you what, that's straight from Rucker Park. I mean, this kid grew up playing on the streets. He brings that street basketball to Iowa. He's the one kid on this Hawkeye team that could go up against the elite guards in the country and match them with their speed. He's an elite defender, a, a solid shooter, but he can twist and turn in the air like no one else on this Hawkeye team. He's spectacular to watch. Remember that early Huskies lead at the first media timeout? That's gone. Iowa on a 15-0 run here. Thornton taking on everybody, including Garza. Reload. Doesn't go for Chris Johnson amongst the trees. And here go the Huskies one more time. Trump. Oh, nice move to the bucket. Outstanding decision. He wanted to pass that, but he didn't want to turn it over. He attacked the rim, and good things happen. But I keep coming back to Thornton. I mean, this kid knows how to play. He's missing some bunnies, but he has to keep attacking this Iowa zone defense. A lot of ways to get the ball inside. One of the ways is off the bounce. Kick it. Murray. And Keegan connects, and that's just inside outside basketball by the Hawks. Garza triggers it. Yeah, how do you guard Iowa? I mean, everybody coming in the game can shoot the three, including number 15. And he was really torching the Nets this summer. Hasn't shot it as well early in this season, but he's rebounding well, and he fits in well with this Hawkeye program. Yeah, smooth stroke. Yeah. The kid out of Cedar Rapids. Hawkeye's lead is 14. Garza clears again. Bumper cars, head of the wheel. Garza goes to work, baby hook. And that time, maybe didn't square up and get a clean look at the bucket, Jess. Oh, yeah, that was that uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar sky hook he's been working on, but his dad, Frank's going to tell him after the game, uh, we got a little more work to do on that. Taking <laughs> <laughs> it strong. And last touch by one of the Huskies in traffic. Well, Keegan Murray, if you just get your hands ready, the big fella will find you. No one guarding him. Nice stroke. I played with his dad, Kenyon Murray, at Iowa. And like father, like son. You give him a little window, they'll knock it in. But he's been a big surprise. Even his teammates, I talked to Connor McCaffrey before the game. He said, look, this kid's going to be a star. He, he's got all kinds of bounce. He can rebound, and he can really shoot it. And still growing, too. Yeah. Good. And right through the hands there, but one of the Huskies got a fingertip on it. His twin brother, Chris, also on the roster. 
And Nunji kind of had his mind made up before that. That was not there. Iowa got away with the one there. That should have been a turnover. Toussaint around the screen. And the mismatch is Toussaint. Toussaint has to get this ball and attack the defender. Twisting, turning, Nunji knows. Caffrey chases it down. Murray. Oh, baseline moves behind the back and then take it in strong. I just did not see this coming when he's in high school. He had the growth spurt. He's always had the skill set, but when he got that height and that bounce to his step, he's just become an impactful player early in his career. I thought it would be a couple years, but you just saw on the last couple of possessions. Big three and a nice drive. And a big time block. That'll make Daddy proud. Oh, no doubt. The proudest guy in the state of Iowa, Kenyon Murray. I'll guarantee you that. 28-12. Hawkeyes. Strong. Strong. Including the youngster. Taking it strong. The city just settles one of the most difficult jobs here at Carver Hawkeye Arena is the gentleman who runs the shot clock because he's always working it. And this team has been on fire lately. It's not just one guy. It's Bohannon and Garza. And Wieskamp steps up and takes his turn. And Keegan Murray has joined the party. So many weapons on the court. And everybody out there can shoot the three-point shot. It puts so much pressure on a defense. You can have decent possessions defensively, and the Hawkeyes will still drop one in from 25 on you. And then pinch him outside the arc, and you know who will take over in the paint. Cushion is 16 at the moment with Garza getting a breather. Toussaint, a 15-footer, and he shot at 14. Four on the shot clock. McCaffrey off the heel. Another rebound. That's a, the 11th here in the first half by the Hawkeyes. And if at first you don't succeed, keep rebounding. Keegan Murray finally makes the possession pay off. Well, he gets the offensive rebound, and then it comes back to him, and that's the way it's supposed to work. He does the dirty work, makes the extra play. It comes back to him. He gets rewarded. I'm telling you right now, his fingerprints are all over this first half. Ten on the shot clock. Huskies have been bleeding it down. That time a long launch by Hankerson. And he does have that range, but that was just a little quick. He's frustrated, wants to get on the scoreboard. He's got to move the ball around, make the extra pass. Northern gets the ball here. They've been having good possessions. It's just difficult when you get into paint to go up against these trees on the Iowa front line. And then after the methodical pace on the offensive end, you got to hustle back and play defense on the Hawkeyes end. No, you really do. You can't just sprint back to the paint. You have to sprint back and find shooters. That puts a lot of pressure, especially on the big guys. But at this offensive end, they're handling the pressure decently, but they've got to make it pay. I spoke too soon. Joe Wieskamp says thank you very much. And that pinching pressure in the backcourt pays off with a T.O. and a bucket. Hankerson finds the open man. I don't know how he did with all the tall timber in front of him. Yeah, tremendous decision by Hankerson. Good patience. He was trapped, but he found the open man. Those are the easy buckets they've had a hard time coming by. McCaffrey. Patrick for three. And again, Iowa doing this with Garza getting a breather. Whistle and a foul. That'll send Darius Bean to the strike. Well, I mean, again, another guy comes off the bench. This time it's Patrick, a great high school shooter. He's coming to college, knocking in threes as well. But he's wide open. This, these guys make the extra pass, and that shot was true. And it's so nice to see Patrick at the top of the three-quarter court press going. You go, Hawkeye fans go all the way back to Brad Lowhouse and Wade Lookingbill and Kevin Gamble, Kenyon Murray, Aaron White. It's just been a tradition around here, and he's just the next in line. You look at the length and the pressure he puts on a guard up front, and you just saw Wieskamp come up with the cheap turnover with that pressure. Darius Bean split the free throws. Try to make it a three-point play. Oh, my, Thornton. 
got hit right in the schnoz. <laughs> and he's going to see those uh, flash bulb birdies for a little bit. Oh, Gathorian's playing so hard. But I, I think Connor was trying to get two assists on the same play. Did He, he intentionally throws it into the melon of the defender. That's one assist. <laughs> Comes back to him. And he's like, you've got to finish that, Wheezy Wheezy. I could have two assists on one possession. He throws it <laughs> intentionally, you say, Jess. <laughs> Oh, I love Connor McCaffrey. My goodness, does he guard or what? And he is one of the best passers in the country. Led the country last year in assist to turnover ratio. That's one guy you just can't have injured if you're Iowa. He has to stay on the court. Iron on the second freebie. Murray got it, and then they get the bucket underneath the Wieskin. Was that another offensive rebound by Murray? I mean, this kid's going to be starting in a few weeks if he keeps playing like this. Iowa opens it up. 38 to 15 here. Under five to go in the first. Overlay there. Murray aboard. Kick it ahead. Bean, though, on the interception. A nice decision by Thornton. He once again breaks down the defense, but Northern has probably missed 10 layups in this game. There's Murray. Passing lane. Retrieves it. Wees camp. And one. And triggered again by the freshman Murray. Well, Hawkeye fans, a star is born in Keegan Murray in this game. He has done everything. There's the assist. He's knocked down the threes. Multiple offensive rebounds, blocks, defense. Just an incredible performance. Almost Luka Garza-ish here in the last couple minutes by the young freshman out of Cedar Rapids. Yeah, and heads up there to dish it to Wieskamp, say, here. Yeah. Take it in, which he did. Bohannon returns for the Hawkeyes. And Thornton has to be really smart here with the ball being the ball fakes. Somebody flash to the middle and try to strike quickly on the back side of this three-quarter court press. Yeah, good work by uh, Patrick McCaffrey there. Yeah. Good minutes, good production. Bean clogged in the corner to swing it to the other corner. Three ball won't go for Crump. Dribble drive, nothing there. Dump it off, and Crump goes in strong in the baseline. Yeah, Coach Montgomery's like, finally, we, we made a layup. Like, we're doing the right things. We have to just be stronger with the basketball against this length. Under four to go here before halftime. Overlay underneath. And the Huskies, despite the big hole here, will stay true in their offensive sets as work that shot clock. Side to side, you want to look for the weaknesses in this zone, but those lazy passes are something that you do not want to throw. But what about Keegan Murray? He has been spectacular in this game, doing it both ends of the court. Kenyon Murray. And halftime. Jess, you, you want to go through the motions with this? or You've already anointed Garza to do it again. Hey, right. Everybody else is fighting for second place at this point. It's still early. There are probably a few sleepers out there can jump up on this list. But Io DeSumo has been spectacular at Illinois. I covered Zagorowski at Creighton a few weeks ago, and they are phenomenal. He's a brilliant player coming off of the knee surges. But at this point, somebody's going to have to really emerge to catch Luca Garza. Jumper, baseline, and count it for a Don McCoy. And that's just what you have to do if you can't get inside and score. Now face up the big man and knock in that little 15-footer. Another good quality possession by Northern Illinois at the offensive end. Aaron Eulis is in there for Iowa. He tosses that away. Fran McCaffrey the other night, they're having their way with Iowa State. Calls a timeout, chews him out in the yeah. second half because he didn't like the defense. Yeah, he, Luca's definitely coachable. These guys are all coachable. Yeah, even in this first half, Fran hasn't been exactly thrilled at this end of the court. Northern Illinois is missing a lot of easy shots. Lob it. Too easy. And Garza back to the stripe. I was talking to Mark Montgomery about how do you stop Luca Garza in a game like this.
this, and he said, well, you can't stop him, but you have to try to work as hard as he does. But he said something that I thought was fascinating that all young players would like to hear. He said, Luca Garza outruns the court against the guys who are fresh that we just put in. Now, just think about that coming from an opposing coach. He works so hard that he outsprints the big guys on his team when he puts them in, and they've been resting for five minutes. That's, and that's a perfect example of it right there. The accolades continue to pour in from all comers as McCoy with a throwdown. Uh, another lesson for Iowa's defense here, giving up too many easy baskets. They can't play the score. They have to fight through those possessions and get stops. Bohannon answers with a triple. And then it's the big question for Iowa. They're going to score on anybody. I mean, you can just see from this game, everybody's capable of knocking in 20 points, but they have to put together stops when they play against the top 20 teams in the country. A fade away that time by Zul Queth. Wieskamp in strong. Protected the ball, too, with two hands. Made sure he got the easy layup. Well, Connor's like, Wiesy, why don't you throw that down? I mean, look. I want my assist to uh, make the highlight reel tonight. I don't want the easy layup. That was the right decision, though, by Wieskamp. Outside the arc. Now into the paint, but clogged there by Garza. Eight to shoot. Bean does and connects. Uh, excellent offensive possession. The ball goes to the high post, collapses the defense a little bit, doesn't force a shot, kicks it out to a teammate, and gets a clean look. Garza on the delivery. McCaffrey, though, no room to operate. There's Thornton. Bunny hop, put back goes for McCoy. Connor got hung in no man's land. You get the turnover, and then Wieskamp tries to make a steal at half court against a guy who's twice as fast as him, puts the defense in a precarious situation, mismatch, and get an easy layup at that end. Well, and way downtown. Got to sprint back, Bob. Even in a game like this, you got to sprint back and establish that defense, get it set. Under a minute to go in the first half. Thornton thought about it. McCoy. Queth. Nicely done. High off the window. All the big bodies in the paint. NIU working in the paint because nothing going in from outside the arc at the moment. Final seconds here. Hawkeyes will try to go up and over 50. At the half, and they do. On the fadeaway by McCaffrey. And that's how we end it. Team that averages, averages NBA like numbers. 99 a game. They're halfway there. Iowa 51, Northern Illinois 27. Halftime coming your way on FS1. Stick with us. Look out. No, no, that's exactly right. Everybody knows what Garz is going to bring to the table, but it's the role players coming in off the bench. If they can rise up and consistently do this, especially in Big Ten play, they have an opportunity to win a championship. I just talked to Kenyon Murray, Keegan's dad at halftime, my old buddy, my old teammate. And he just talked about the explosive growth of Keegan at the prep school in Florida that he went to that made all the difference in the world. Went from being an average player to becoming a star, and he could not have played any better in the first half. There's Keegan Murray just getting it done at both ends of the court. Good smile. Uh, <laughs> first half there from the freshman. That's, that's the game face right there. Is, is that from Dad, Jess? Kenyon has one of the best smiles in the country. Right. So, no, I, yeah. don't, I don't know what's Come going on. on there. He's got a... He's locked in and ready to go, but I'll tell you one thing, Hawkeye fans. Kenyon looks like he can still come out here and play a little bit. He's in shape. No doubt. Hawkeye's ball to start the second half. I mentioned they're averaging, averaging 99 a contest. Tossed up a 105 burger on Iowa State the other night. And Garza starts it off with a triple. And Garza comes up and sets a chin screen, gets his teammate open, and then rolls to the open spot. He reads that play to perfection. A lot of big guys will roll to the basket, try to get the layup. He sees the open.
opening on the weak side, steps out for a high percentage three-point shot. We probably don't talk about his basketball IQ enough. We know he plays hard. We know about the skill set. But my goodness, he's a smart basketball player. Over and back violation there on Hankerson. And Mark Montgomery trying to figure out how to deal with this Iowa pressure. And they've done a pretty good job of not turning the ball over. That's a positive, but when they've had their opportunities to strike, they've missed so many layups, and they can't handle, obviously, the size and skill of Luka Garza in the post. He's camp drive and kick, Bohannon. Caffrey squares up a triple and knocks it down. I think Iowa will take its foot off the gas pedal. You have not watched Hawkeyes basketball this season. And there will be a lot of teams that make Connor prove it from beyond the arc. He's going to have opportunities to step up and make defensive pay. And he has a nice looking shot. It's just a matter of staying in the gym, getting the reps, and knocking in those clean looks. But if he is hitting, and we've said this 20 times tonight, but if Connor McCaffrey and Joe Toussaint are hitting the three point shot, hey, look, Iowa's going to be the best team in the country in a couple weeks. They had 17 bombs in the win against North Carolina. That was too shy of the school record. Garza kicked and tripped and somehow still put basketball on rim. He gets fouled. So it's been such a special relationship with Frank and his wife Sheila and their son Luca as they've come to Iowa, almost to become Iowa natives. They're out of Washington, D.C., but he's really taking the basketball world by storm. And I said, look, Luke, I said, to become an official Iowan, you got to do one of three things. I said, have you ever walked beans, detasseled corn, or baled hay? And he said, no, Bob. He said, but I did milk a cow once a couple years ago. I said, I don't know. That's a Wisconsin thing, right? Yeah. I, he, That's a start. He, he smiled at me, and he said, but I did drop 34 on Iowa State. Does that count? And I said, well, you're officially a citizen now, my man. Just has officially waved him through. Despite the cow milking. <laughs> Crump. Little floater. And one. Anthony Crump. Takes it to the paint. Got a little separation. That's all he needed. And he's very good at that. And we talked about that earlier in the game. No use taking that jumper. He can beat guys off the bounce. Takes the hit. Great job by the official to get that ticky tacker. And he'll go up to the line and have an opportunity to score. But he's going to have a good year. It's just a matter of not settling. He has the speed to get by slower defenders. Yeah, two years at Middle Tennessee State. Got a waiver to play immediately for the Huskies. And they need bodies. Interior feed. And then you saw McCoy. Hands in the cookie jar there. He got caught. I love how Connor McCaffrey pushes the basketball, dribbles with his head up, always scouting and probing a defense, and he's the reason Luca got another easy shot right there. Easy inbound and easy bucket there by Wieskamp. The lead balloons to 61 to 29. Hankerson. Stripped on the way up, and that'll be Iowa basketball. Hankerson has really had a tough time trying to find his rhythm, find his stroke. He led the Mac in three-point shooting last season, but Iowa is suffocating all of his attempts today. It's so difficult when one year you're the third or fourth option, and then the next year you're the number one option, and you face the tough, toughest defender every night, and that's what the case is here today. They get Wieskamp plowing in for the foul. Caleb Thornton returns. He had a good first half for the Huskies. The energy bunny off the bench. Pop it to the corner. Off the heel for Quet. There's Hankerson. Got a look. First three-pointer, Jess, of the afternoon for the Huskies. Yeah, you were right on cue there, Bob. The easiest three-point shot in the game of basketball is off an offensive rebound. It's just like playing catch with your dad in the gym or your coach at night. You just kick it out from underneath the basket. And he rose up. He's got that ability. You, you mentioned it. Wieskamp got oh the last God. bucket, then got the steal. Bohannon, no. Garza. 
and a paw on it. Out of the pile comes Thornton. Hawkeyes one and a walk. We play on. There's Hankerson for three again. Fade away. Missed it. Okanu. Got it back, and Bean missed it on the fadeaway. Slam dunk, Wieskamp. Well, so you got Luca Garza, ladies and gentlemen, playing point guard, throwing it to Connor McCaffrey at the wing, slips it to Weezy Wieskamp from Muscatine, and he tears the rim down. Talk about interchangeable parts. You got the All-American bringing the ball up. Maybe that wasn't far-fetched when I said Larry Bird earlier in the, season, in the broadcast, Bob. And Wieskamp couldn't believe it. Okay, wait, so I'm supposed to flush this like Luca does? Okay, can do. I'll just play center, he said. I'll throw it down. And I was offense clicking on all cylinders. There's another cut, and Wieskamp delivers again on the perfect interior feed. And when you play with Connor McCaffrey, if you just cut with integrity, he will find you. That's his role, and he nails a perfect pass again. Wieskamp just cleaning up right now early in the second half. Thornton took it in. Not a great decision. Got suffocated, and there's Garza. Little finger rail roll up and over the rim. And I'd like to here in Iowa City, 71 to 32, and Jess, he's no ordinary Joe, is he? Well, well, there's just nothing he can't do on the basketball court. I mean, obviously he can shoot the three, but he runs it well, uses both hands, extremely unselfish. Boy, showing us the vert there as well, but he's been doing this his entire life. I talked to him before the game, and he said, look, during the offseason, we have a weight room in our house. And he goes, I just try to get stronger. And you can get a lot stronger without gaining weight, and you can just tell that. He's attacking the rim with a vengeance. It hasn't affected his shot. And he's going to be playing basketball a long time. But, look, he wants to hang a banner. That's how he wants to be remembered. He's well on his way to that. Reaching foul there. Whistled on Nunji. And another quick timeout. Everybody gets a chance to towel off again. Show live on site from Indianapolis. Followed by the Big Ten Championship at noon Eastern only on Fox. Football Hawkeyes getting it done across the street yesterday, thumping the Wisconsin Badgers. That's six in a row now for Kirk Ferentz and company. Another outstanding year for Coach Kirk and the Hawkeyes. And such a unique year without the fans in all these stadiums. But they've been resilient and just so glad these games are getting played. It's been tough on everybody. But uh, it's sure fun for the fans to be able to watch their teams, and especially the parents to be able to watch their kids play. Yeah, amen. And we're all sick of the cutouts. Yeah. We like the look. Where's my cutout? I mean, how about a little respect for the guy who was here six or seven years or whatever it was? I think they ran out of card stock, big guy. Man. To set. Twisting and turning, a little French pastry twist at the end. And that's really that Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, bring it up on one side, come to the other side, reverse layup. And he's about the only guy who can do that in the gym because he has so much hang time. It's just, you sit here courtside and watch him, it's spectacular. Everybody else is coming down, and he's still slithering through the defense. Bean with the bump. Didn't get the call, but he stays in there and fights for it. Yeah, Joe Toussaint, I mean, last year he just had one gear. This year he has two or three. So much more under control. Nice back cut. Another dime by Connor, and I see it. Just an outstanding talent. Gets better every single time I watch him play. Well, and with Toussaint, he recognizes the talent on the floor. So when he comes in, number one's making the most of his minutes. Such a good point. I mean, so many kids in this situation would come in, try to prove themselves during their time. He comes in and runs the offense. It's a great point, Bob. He just showed us that. He could come out here and start launching, but he just look, he has his heads up, his head up, makes the extra pass, looking to run the offense. Backdoor feed. And Nunji takes it in for the easy curl. And Coach McCaffrey 
getting on his guys at the timeout saying, we got to rebound better. Northern has too many offensive rebounds, over 10, and it happened on the last possession. So there are things you have to work on if you're going to be great. Let's watch the next couple possessions. If there's a miss, who comes down with it? Bean took it there in. There you go. Shot lost the handle, but regains. McCaffrey for three. Tipped by his brother, though, to Tucson. And then whip it back underneath for Nunji in the flush. Joe Tucson with the no-look whip pass. My goodness, the kid's got eyes all over his head. No doubt did that on the playgrounds in the Bronx. There you go. Where toughness prevails. Drive and a nice kick and they finally get the bucket, but not until Nunji disrupted things. Made it tough on the Huskies. Frederick and CJ connects. It's kind of quiet today, but well, you'll, he's not very quiet in the big game. Yes. Right? Yes. When the big games are here, I mean, he's just letting it come to him today. But Iowa absolutely stole him out of the state of Ohio. I don't know what, when you try to come up with a, who has the it factor in college basketball, but he is he has the it factor. He just rises up when you need him the most. And he's got a sick mid-range game. That jumper's pure. Thornton on the miss. McCaffrey turns and fires to side. Love it! And a little too much juice on it for Patrick to finish. Keenan Cole misses. Huskies starting to fall into the Iowa trap, rushing their shots now a little bit on the offensive end. Nunji misses. And those are good shots. That's what Iowa basketball does. That's what the analytics say you have to do. If you get the open shot and you're a good shooter, you have to put it up. There's no use waiting till late in the shot clock to force one. You strike quickly and let the ball fall where it may. But that's a good look by Nunji. Toussaint gets the tie up. Joe Toussaint is a big time defensive player, but look, he dimes Nunji. I don't know how he got it through there. But that's the assist of the night. C.J. Frederick, a little quiet this afternoon, but oh, don't sleep on the sophomore. He'll come back and bite you. I mean, when the lights are shining the brightest, he plays his best. He was spectacular against North Carolina, and he's added a mid-range game to that beautiful shot that he has. Just worked relentlessly over the summer, but his uncle played for Digger Phelps at Notre Dame. Fran McCaffrey was an assistant coach for Digger Phelps, and they just really connected. And so a lot of the big big boys didn't get in on CJ because they knew that connection was there. And boy, that kid is a steal. Now, during the timeout, the officials were huddled up at the monitor. They were looking at one of the tussles underneath the basket before we went to the break. Didn't seem like there was a whole lot there, but... They looked it over during the T.O. and then some, and just the verdict is. Well, we haven't seen it, but it looks like a flagrant one on 13 McCoy for Northern Illinois. And, and uh, well, that's unfortunate. I might have heard Connor McCaffrey. He was asking the officials, go look at that. And they did. Now, well, here's the, the tie-up. And there's nothing there. And you see Connor saying, go look. But it, it, it couldn't have been the tie. No, no, that he said 13. Yeah, 13. So Connor just wanted to shoot some freebies. One more coming for the two-sport athlete here at Iowa. You were talking to Connor before the contest this afternoon about how baseball and basketball interact this time of year. Yeah, he said it's been very difficult to manage with the COVID situation and he's trying to do everything he can to just uh, stay close to this team because they're having such a special year. But he's a great baseball player, uh, a tremendous leader, does so much for this Hawkeye program in baseball and basketball. And I'll tell you, I do. Look, he, he's not wearing the Jordans today, and he just plays better with the Jordans. I'm a little disappointed in his shoe selection, to be honest with you, Bob. It's all about the shoes? Oh. Is that what you're saying? I mean, he, he breaks those Jordan retros out. He's good for double figures. Okay. Connor has a seat. Patrick's in there now for the Hawkeyes. Oh, 
Drive by Tony Perkins. And Perkins in the books for the Hawkeyes. Under uh, 12 to go. I like his strength. I mean, he attacked the rim, took the hit, was able to squeeze the ball over the rim. But you look at his broad shoulders. He's got a bright future here as well. He's a very tough competitor. Makes practices so much better. Freshman out of Indianapolis on the board at 81 35. Anderson caught, handoff to Crump. Goes in strong and won. Anthony Crump has shown no fear against the bigger Hawkeyes today. And we dial the tape back. Watch at the bottom of your screen right there. And, well, Connor sold it, didn't he? <laughs> They got Keenan Cole with the flagrant one. Well, Northern Illinois continues to be relentless on the glass. They come crashing in there. Iowa not getting a body on them for most of the afternoon. And another second chance opportunity for the Huskies. And Zul Quest on the putback. Kick by Eulis. Six to shoot. McCaffrey will. Up in there. Beat the shot clock, but ran out of room underneath. It's very difficult to play zone against this Iowa offense. So many shooters on the court, and then you give up the offensive rebound as well. And Trump running the floor. Hankerson delivers from the corner. Told you that Fran McCaffrey. He won't lay off the gas pedal, and neither is Mark Montgomery. Coaching and teaching his guys, and yeah, you want to be underneath the bucket and run camera, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure the life insurance is paid up. There you go. Eulis. Nice baseline move there. And Eulis' older brother, Tyler, almost came to Iowa, ended up going to Kentucky and just didn't feel like he could turn that scholarship down. But the family had a great relationship with Fran McCaffrey. And that's why the younger Eulis is here. And he's also the real deal. This Iowa basketball team right now, they're loaded for the future. Everybody can play. Let's talk about some great practices. they got 15 kids who can fill it up. Murray takes it in, switches hands. And the silky, soft move by Keegan Murray once again, attacking the basket. And then just laying it in. No problem. Steal. Perkins. Hit the heel. Juan the highlight. Instead, the Huskies try to make him pay with a three. Anderson goes interior. Nothing there for McCoy. Thornton launches off balance and hits. Hey, Thornton's going to have a big year. He just has that in his game. He's got to play with a little more confidence. I'd like to see him get a lot more shots up through the course of the game. Not many guys in his league who can stay in front of him. Patrick turns, fires, put back no by Perkins. And Coach Montgomery just working on things for the future, trying to put these kids in this strenuous situation in the zone defense because it's very difficult to play zone against Iowa with all these mid-range shooters and three-point shooters. But he wants to see his team get better. He's coached a solid game here this afternoon against a team that's just got a lot better athletes. That'll go. Two shots. You know, he blew by the basket and then said, oh, wait, I'll figure out a way to put it in. Well, he's got that, that Jordan Kobe move down pat. I mean, it's, it's just automatic. Uses the rim to seal off the defender, brings it up on the other side with just the right amount of English on it. Off of Thornton, Hawkeye's basketball. The under eight here at Carver Hawkeye. And the Hawkeyes still running, still gunning. 7:44. Latest poll: Gonzaga on top, Hawkeyes at number three. Those two teams will tangle Saturday in Sioux Falls. So Jess, we'll get a good barometer on how things stack up between those top three teams. Exactly right. I mean, how exciting is that if you're an Iowa fan to get a take on the Zags and Suggs for the Zags is an elite freshman, great point guard. They're so well coached. But a week from today. 
if Iowa can knock them off, the Iowa Hawkeyes will be the number one team in the land. I mean, that's that's remarkable. And when Big Ten play kicks in, imagine <laughs> the matchups. Iowa, Michigan State, Iowa, Wisconsin, Iowa, Illinois. I mean, we got some battles brewing, Jess. I mean, the league is so good from top to bottom that I think you could lose two games in a week and still go up a couple spots in the AP poll. I mean, it's remarkable. There are so many top teams, and, and Michigan State, let's not forget about them. You know how much better they get as the year goes on. Catch and shoot Cole. Rebound cleared by Perkins. Patrick wanted to and backed it off. Underneath Murray, he gets stuck. And blocked from behind. Husky's got it. And a little too unselfish by Murray right there. He's got the angle. You're that close. You have to go up and at least try to draw a foul. Saved, yes. I think he heard us, right? He, just, he wanted to make up for that. Absolutely. Patrick sets up shot. Finds Eulis. Eulis gets it back. Huskies basketball. Who in the Big Ten, Jess, if anyone, has the beef to contend with a Luca Garza? Well, Kofi and Georgia at Illinois are probably the two guys who can bring the muscle to that game. And uh, But then you don't forget about Reavers and Potter up at Wisconsin. They're definitely not afraid of anybody they go against. Hauser at Michigan State's tough. And, and even Aaron Henry might play some play some five in that game. So there are some tough guys. And the guys out at the rack at Rutgers have some muscle as well. I'm telling you, it's... It's so hard to predict the Big Ten this year. There will be so many close games. It's going to come down to just who can win the last couple of minutes of those games. And at this point, you have no idea who's going to rise up and get it done. Even Northwestern's playing well. It's going to be tough to win in Nebraska. By far the best league in the country. I just can't wait. I hope everybody stays healthy and get these games played. And it's going to be must-see TV. Yeah, buckle your seatbelts and enjoy. Player of the Year candidates this season in the Big Ten. Maybe a foregone conclusion, but... You know, and maybe not, right? When you look at Iowa at Illinois, if he can lead his team to a league championship, he's going to put a lot of pressure on Luka. And then Carr at Minnesota, we haven't even talked about the Gophers. They're the one team this year that have really suffered the most by not having the practices. They've had all the transfers, all the new faces. And if they can find their chemistry, we know what Mr. Carr can do down the stretch. I mean, he's a walking bucket. And there's a walking bucket right there, Luka Garza. You saw Luka. His day is done, no doubt, but still frustrated for his teammates out there. That mind is always working. That, uh, you talk about the IQ and the basketball mind. I mean, he's thinking, look, look at, I mean, frustrated right now. He wants to finish strong. Yeah, just such a fascinating story there. You know, with the emergence of AAU basketball over the last 20 years, you have so many kids who play 60, 70, 80 games a summer, and you say, well, that's a good thing. Well, not, not necessarily if you're not working on your individual game. And Luca Garza lives in the gym, and he's, he's kind of brought fundamentals back to college basketball just a little bit. A lot of credit goes to his dad, Frank. But I asked him about that earlier, and he said, look, I, I play pickup basketball, but it's to learn what I need to work on individually. And I thought that was a very wise answer to that question. You see the numbers? They are ridiculous. And we keep saying that. The Iowa game notes, everybody gets a player game note, right? Yeah. Shows what you've done so far. Luca's got three pages. <laughs> Only three? <laughs> Only three, yeah. No, I, well, I kept he, uh, fumbling through. There's got to be more, but right. they, they crammed a lot of information. And he just keeps adding to it in his stellar career here with the Hawkeyes. I think anybody who's ever gone out in the backyard or to the gym and shot baskets has found a little bit of his own, right? You, you play a game of horse or pig, and you've hit five or six in a row, and you think you're... You're, you're shooting it well, but it, it's, it's another thing to come out under the lights and getting these zones that he's get, getting into, and only the greats have done that. I, and I'm trying to rack my mind. Maybe Doug McDermott at Creighton a few years back, he got into one of those zones where he was good for 30 every night, but you rarely, 
ever see it out of what you call the center position. Yulis goes in, short arms it. Patrick for three. trying to slow things down. Fran McCaffrey says, keep it up, boys. Keep it up. When you have a special team like these Hawkeyes, Jess, and your Fran McCaffrey, you demand perfection even in games like this when it's tilted one way. You keep coaching. You keep pushing. That's how special teams stay special. I totally agree. And Coach McCaffrey and his staff have done just a wonderful job with this group. And you wondered at the beginning of the year, would guys come back and try to prove themselves, try to show that they're NBA worthy or whatever that mentality is. But it's just been right from the start, playing the right way, sharing the basketball. Luca Garza has gotten all the headlines. But when everybody else has needed to step up, they've done that. Everybody on this team really likes each other. You can see how hard and unselfish the second group is playing. Uh, but sometimes players are in a zone and sometimes coaches get in that zone and Coach McCaffrey and Billy Taylor and Sherm and Spira and Al Siebert, they're pushing all the right buttons early in this season and they are a force to be reckoned with in the Big Ten and, and nationally as well. Oh, it's accountability, Jess. I mean, yeah. everybody on this Hawkeyes roster, they demand it of each other. Lob it, finish it. McCaffrey. And Toussaint made it happen with the perfect delivery in midair. Well, we saw that try about five minutes ago, and if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. And that time it worked to perfection. Patrick McCaffrey, my goodness. So nice to see him back, and it's great to see the speed and the length that he uses out there on the court. He really knows how to play the game, and boy, he rose up right there. Toussaint knew he was going to come, but... Nice throwdown, a little like a Grant Hill one-handed catch back in the day. That's a good call. Well, uh, Joe Tucson. Okay, it didn't work the first time, but it worked the second time. Flex a little bit, Patrick McCaffrey. Just made the highlights. I think they'll meet their scoring average. They're closing in, but my goodness, Coastal Carolina, 102 plus, and. Iowa the other day against Iowa State put up 105. I mean, it's fast and furious each and every night. And that's the thing with this Iowa offense. I mean, they can go through droughts, but all of a sudden they just explode on you. They start raining down threes, and it puts a lot of pressure on the defense. Frustrates a good defensive plan when guys can shoot it this deep. And that's just a big question over the last few years. Can, can Iowa guard well enough to go to a Final Four? And the statistic, I think Casey Jacobson brought this up a few weeks ago on the halftime show. It's over the last eight years, every team that's made it to the Final Four has been in the top 50 of defensive efficiency. So the, 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 the quick answer is you have to be great defensively to go where you really want to go. But when you hang 100 on everybody, you can have a few nights off defensively and still get away with it. Steal there provided by Chris Murray. But the miss on the other end for the Hawkeyes. 3.20 to go on this one. Thornton to Hankerson. Around the horn we go. Oh, nice bounce feed. And the finish. There have been flashes for these Huskies, Jess. They play out of the Mac. A lot of transfers for Mark, Mark Montgomery. No freshman on the squad. He didn't want to have the cover completely bare and deal with a bunch of newbies. So he's got kids who have experience. It's just blending them all together. And then how do you do that when you only get to practice two or three times and maybe one time with your full squad with the COVID situation going on? So you tip your hat to him and the staff. They've had a good run there the last couple of years. He's been there 10 years. His teams will always fight you to the death at the defensive end. They're a good rebounding team. He's a Tom Izzo disciple. So you come in here and you're overwhelmed talent-wise but they got a chance to have a good year in the conference. They had lost a heartbreaker to Ball State. I watched that tape, and that's a game they should have won. Got beaten overtime last week. Yeah, there were times Mark Montgomery 
had to go to war in practice and do four on four. That's all who was left. It's uh, it's tough on everybody. It's nice to have a veteran team like Iowa where you don't need to practice as much. But let's keep our eye on Ash for Iowa number 13. I mean, this kid comes in. If he gets it, he will put it up. And kind of a fan favorite. Plays hard. But believe it or not, probably, according to teammates, would win the game of horse on this Iowa team. There it is. And right on cue. So now somebody else has to go down and shoot a contested three. Is that how it works? <laughs> Otherwise, H for you. I mean, his last name should probably be confidence. Because when he touches it, he feels like it's automatic. Twisting and tipped in by McCoy. Under two. Hawkeyes up and over the century mark for the third time this season. I mean, Eulis can flat out play. I mean, that's just a high IQ decision. Look at the muscle that kid already has. It looks like he could go play for Kirk, play some free safety and stick some people. He is he's a big time player. It's hard to get minutes this year, but watch out in the future. Ash took it in strong and tipping goes. Credit Tony Perkins. And now, quick timeout to get some more bodies in here. Michael Bear out of the Quad Cities in for Iowa. Well, the Quad Cities produces a lot of great players. Kevin Skill, a teammate I played with. And the administrator of North, Jason Smith was a walking bucket. Great team years ago out of Quad City. Ricky Davis, first round draft pick. A lot of good basketball coming out of there. And the Bear family, they know how to play this game, I tell you. Put back by McCoy. And McCoy's showing us something as well. I mean, the, the more experience he gets, the more practices, the more time with Coach Montgomery, it's going to continue to get better, take that next step. Get out of Edmonton. He's been battling all afternoon. But the Huskies will fall to 0-5. That one blocked by Michael Bear. Launching and hitting. Austin Ash. And he's backing up your horse claim, isn't he, Jess? I mean, this kid can flat out shoot, and he's got to keep himself ready because if somebody goes down, he's the type of guy that Fran McCaffrey will trust to come into the game. And I'll tell you, Bob, it's been a pleasure working with you today. It's been fun to watch the Hawkeyes. Brendan Unkrich, join us, our stat guy. Appreciate you, buddy. Hawkeyes have a big time game coming up, and it's going to be a special year here in Iowa City. And I echo what you just said, partner. 106 now, as you see next up for Fran and company, who gets win number 200 here this afternoon as head coach of the Hawkeyes. It's Gonzaga. Looking to become the number one team in the nation for the first time since the 87-88 year with Tom Davis, B.J. Roy, and Ed. And looking to get back to the Final Four. First time since Bobby Hanson and company with Lute Olsen did it. This team can do it. They definitely have the talent. They've got the All-American, and they can flat out shoot it. And they back off having a little exclamation point on it. 106 is the high water mark for points scored this year by the Hawkeyes, and there it is. It's official. 200 in his 11th season as head coach here at Iowa. Another convincing W for the number three team in the land. Being the Huskies, 106 to 54. All right, final thoughts when we return to Carver Hawkeye Arena. Iowa now 6-0, getting ready for the Zags in six days. Another launch and low from everybody, including Austin Ash. It was another...